And the question is regarding Mark 1 verse 15 and asks, does the kingdom of God here in Mark 1 verse 15 refer to Christ's kingdom that is coming in our time? When Jesus started his ministry, he basically announced that the kingdom had come. come. Now, why had the kingdom come? It was referring to him. It was referring to himself. And he was, of course, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You know that Satan had wrested the kingdom from Adam and Eve. Yes. God had given it, had given dominion to Adam and Eve. Satan stole it from them. He usurped them, and they became his servants. But the rightful owner originally was Christ who created it all. Mm. So in the wilderness of temptation... Satan was overcome. He was vanquished. He was a vanquished foe. Yeah. But he wasn't eliminated. Mm. And this is what people don't understand. The fact that Satan was vanquished and the fact that he was not eliminated seems to be in contradiction. Now, why did God not eliminate him? Because there was still a time of probation and a time of choice for humanity. The 6,000 years hadn't been fulfilled. Yeah. And so Satan was allowed to continue with his activities, but he is no longer the representative of this earth. No, Jesus is. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. His place was taken by Jesus Christ. So the victory was gained in that temptation in the wilderness. But the price for sin was paid at the cross. So the price was paid, but the victory was already gained. So since Christ started his ministry, the kingdom of God has come near to humanity. And this is what it refers to, saying the time is fulfilled. What time is fulfilled? Prophetic time. Prophetic time. Mm. And the only one that we have is the prophetic time in the book of Daniel regarding the 70 weeks, which says, from the issuing of the decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem unto mm. Messiah. And then comes the time prophecy, which is... Uh, which finds its fulfillment in 27 AD. So from then onwards, the kingdom of God was being preached directly by God to humanity. Yeah. And then secondly, onto this is the parables in Mark 4 and Matthew. How are these parables like the kingdom of heaven or king of God? All right, let's read them. Thank you, please. If you go to Mark chapter 4, verse 30 and to 32, he said, And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison shall we compare it? It is like a grain of mustard seed when it is sown into the earth, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it groweth up and becometh greater than all herbs, and shooteth out great branches, so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. So the kingdom of God does not come by observation. No. And it's interesting that when he likened the kingdom of God to something, there was nothing in the earthly kingdoms that he could liken it to. Yeah. Very it's interesting, interesting right? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Because the kingdom of God is the antithesis of everything that we have down here. No wonder we're so miserable with the kingdoms of this earth, right? Yeah, and, so, and that's so sad that we want to restore, try and restore the kingdoms on earth. I cannot wait for them to disappear. Exactly. <laughs> In any case, so what did he liken it to, this kingdom of God? He likened it to a seed, a tiny seed planted. In the heart, it will grow imperceptibly, and eventually, before you know it, 
the trees will be huge and the birds will be lodging in the trees. In other words, it is the kingdom that grows imperceptibly amongst humanity and will never ever be uprooted. But the others, according to the prophecy in the book of Daniel, will be destroyed. Because the stone yes. that is cut out without human hands will strike the statue at its feet and the entire statue is pulverized and the wind comes and mm. takes it away and it will be no more. All earthly kingdoms will be as though they never were. Not even a vestige of them will remain. If we take another parable in Matthew 13, verse 24 to 30, Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which soweth good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares amongst the wheat and went his way. And when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the household came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field, and whence then has it tares? He said unto them, An enemy has done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let the both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest I will send the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. So Martin, the kingdom of God has been sown. The mm. good seed has yeah. been sown by Christ himself. You know, it's interesting. The Bible says they will be taught by God. God himself came down to teach humanity. Eh? That's amazing. It set everything straight. So it's, it's so wonderful. Everything that might have been misinterpreted before, he came and just put it straight and final. So there you have this beautiful message explaining the entire kingdom of God. And for your and my benefit, it's recorded in those good books that are on our table over here. And anybody can study them. But then there's an enemy. You know, who's the enemy? Obviously, it's the devil. Mm. And he came and sowed the tares. Now, the tear is very similar to the original wheat. But it is poisonous. And if you uproot it, you will uproot the good as seed as well because you won't be able to tell the difference until it is ripe, mm -hmm. until the fruit is ripe. So humanity looks at the kingdom of God and they see tears. Yes. And tears, unfortunately, uh, seem to predominate. <laughs> <laughs> and so they think that the kingdom of God is not very successful. Mm -hmm. But the kingdom of God is, in fact, successful because very often the very tears that exist strengthen those that belong to the wheat. wheat. Because often God allows apostasy to come into our ranks mm. so that people will make informed decisions. That's it. And then you go to your Bible and you say, now, this and that and this that we are hearing now or that we are being told what to do, is that in harmony with what the Word says? And so let both, both grow together until the harvest and then the reapers will be sent. Now, who are the reapers? The angels. Because it's, again, nothing that we can do. Correct. So he says, go, and he sends forth the angels, and they first gather together mm -hmm. the, tares. the tares to be burnt. And then the Bible says, they will gather his elect from the four corners of the earth, and they will meet the Lord in the sky. They will take them so that they can be with him forever. And then the kingdom 
will be established. So what happens to the tares? It's gone. They're destroyed. Yes. So they lie in state for a thousand years. And after the judgment has taken place in heaven, then Christ will return. A third time. The holy city will come down. A great plain will open up. And the dead that had transgressed against God's will will be raised corruptible. They will try to attack the city and fire will come down out of heaven and consume them. But before they are consumed, every knee will bow. So the kingdom of heaven is here even though it seems to be overgrown. And, you know, it's like the stars. They're not always visible when there is light. Mm. But when it is dark, then the stars become visible. So the darker this world becomes, the brighter the lights will shine. Mm. Let us pray to God that we belong to the lights yes. and not to the darkness.